Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno and welcome back to my C++ series. Last time we talked about dynamic arrays in C++ and specifically the vector class. If you guys haven't seen that video, definitely check that out first. That's going to cover the basics of what a dynamic array actually is and how to use the vector class in C++. And this video here is going to show you how you might use that vector class in a more optimal way. A little bit about how it works and just in general how we can write our code so that it just runs faster. This is kind of exciting because this is like our first kind of optimization video and over the course of this series we are going to be talking a lot more about optimization because C++ is specifically a language which plays nicely with optimization. It's a language that many people pick due to the fact that they might need some lower level optimization. And one of the most important rules of optimization is basically knowing your environment. And what I mean by knowing your environment is how do things work and what do I need to do exactly? And what should happen? Right? And that's that's such a complex topic in itself that we are going to dive deeper into it as the series goes on. But for today, we're just gonna scratch the surface and take a look at what we can do specifically with the example of vector. So to optimize your vector usage, you really should know how vector works and how you can maybe change it to work a little bit better. So basically the way that the standard vector class actually works is you create a vector and then you start pushing back elements. And when you add elements into that array, into that vector, if the size of the vector, if the capacity of the vector is not large enough to contain this new element that you're trying to add, basically what needs to happen is the vector needs to allocate new memory that is at least large enough to hold this new element you're trying to add as well as the current contents of the vector and copy everything across from that old location in memory into the new location in memory and then delete that old location. That's what happens. And so when we try and push back an element, if the capacity runs out, it performs that resizing, that reallocation. And that specifically is one cause of kind of slow code. It's the fact that if we continually need to reallocate, that's a slow operation. We need to reallocate when we need to copy all of our existing elements. That's something we want to avoid. And in fact, that's going to largely be our optimization strategy today, copying. How can we avoid copying our objects if we're dealing with vectors and specifically dealing with object-based vectors. So we're not storing a vector of pointers, we're actually storing a vector of objects. Now, I've said that knowing your environment is one of the most important things with optimization. And right now we're trying to optimize for copying. So we need to know when copies actually happen and why they happen. Let's take a look at some code and figure that out. So from the last video, I had this vertex class. I've just added a constructor to it, but we basically have this kind of default code. It's pretty simple. We have our two vertices that we're pushing back, nothing too fancy. Now let's take a look at what actually happens behind the scenes and identify how many, if any, copies are actually happening with this current code. So a good way to do that is to add a copy constructor to vertex and maybe either put a breakpoint in there or just print something to the console to see when that copy constructor actually gets called. So what I'm going to do is just write a copy constructor. If you're not sure what a copy constructor is or how copying actually works in C++, then definitely check out the video that's linked in the top right corner. But I'm just going to write a very, very simple copy constructor for this vertex class. Now for the purposes of this, we don't really need to fill it out properly, but I've done so anyway. What I'm going to do is print copied over here to our console so that we can take a look at that and let's run this code. Okay, so we get three copies, interesting. I'm actually going to add another element here and this time since I can, I'm just gonna use the actual constructor just so that this code looks a bit easier to read. So I'll make this seven, eight, nine. And in fact, I'm going to switch over my existing ones as well to use this kind of new constructor that I've made. This is just the original default constructor. It does exactly the same thing as the code before, but I think it might just be a little bit easier to read because you know exactly what's happening. Okay, so if I run this code, how many copies do we expect? Six, we have six copies. Now you might be asking yourself, why? Why is that happening? Why is C++ copying my vertex six times in total? What's going on? To debug this a little bit further, I'm gonna place a breakpoint on this line and run this code again. So we have zero copies at the moment, of course, because we haven't even pushed anything back. Let's, let's hit F10. So now we've pushed one element back, one vertex, and we have a copy right? Why is that happening? The reason that's happening is because when we construct our vertex, we're actually constructing it in the current stack frame of the main function. So we're constructing it on the stack in main. And then what needs to happen is we need to put it into that, into that vector, right? So we need to somehow get it from that main class, from the main function, rather not class, function, from the main function into the actual vector, into the memory that the vector has allocated. And of course, the way that we do that is we copy it from the main function into the vector class. That's our first kind of mistake. That's the first thing we can optimize. What if we could just construct that vertex in place 
in the actual memory that the vector has actually allocated for us. That's optimization strategy number one, which we'll implement in a second, but let's keep going. Now, if I hit F10 over here, we get two more copies. So we've now, we're now at three copies. Right, so we already know what's happened. We, we, we already know where one of the copies has gone. It's because we, we're constructing this vertex object on, inside the main function, then pushing it into the vertices vector, which causes a copy. But then why are we getting an additional copy? What's going on? Well, if we hover our mouse over this and we take a look at the actual vertices vector, we can see the capacity is two. What that means is that this, this vector physically has enough memory to store two vertices or two vertex objects. So what happens, of course, is when we try and push another one on, like this third one, and I hit F10, it needs to resize the capacity to three or to anything higher than two, basically, so that we can actually have enough memory to push in our third vertex. So that's another potential optimization strategy. Our vector is being resized twice here. It, it just, it's, it's at one by default. It then moves to two when we add the second element and then moves to three when we add the third element. If we know our environment, if we know that we are planning to push in three vertex objects, why don't we just tell the vector, hey, make enough memory for three so that you don't have to resize yourself twice. Just make enough memory from three from the beginning because I plan to actually push in three elements. That's optimization strategy number two, which we'll implement in a minute as well. So that is the idea of where these six copies are coming from. So let's do the quick and easy optimization strategy, I guess. Let's just tell the vector, hey, I want you to please have the capacity of three. And the way that we can tell the vector, I want to have the capacity of three is by simply after we create it, setting vertices dot reserve three, and you can see that that takes in a capacity. Now this is different to resize, or if we were to pass in three in the constructor. If we actually try and pass in three in the constructor, this code won't even compile. And you can see if I just move this up, the error that we're getting is vertex, no appropriate default constructor available, because what this will actually do is not just allocate enough memory to store three vertices or three vertex objects. It's actually going to construct three vertex objects. We don't want to construct any objects yet. We just want to have enough memory to hold them. That's what reserve does. Reserve makes sure that we actually have enough memory. So the first step is we create this vertices vector and then we reserve three, and then we push back our elements. Let's take a look at how many copies we now get with, this, with the addition of this one line of code. Look at that, three copies instead of six, that's half as many copies. And of course, this kind of goes up exponentially. If we add 10, that's gonna be a lot more copies. So we've saved, a, we've saved a great deal of copies already, so this is great, but we can do better. We're still getting a copy because this vertex is actually being constructed over here inside the main function and then copied into the actual vector. I would like to just construct it in the actual vector. And the way that we can do that is by using emplace back instead of pushback. And so in this case, instead of actually passing a vertex object that we've constructed, we instead just pass the parameter list for the constructor, which basically tells the vector, hey, construct a vertex object with the following parameters in place in our actual vector memory. So I'll do that for all of these and we'll replace it pushback with in place back. Let's hit F5. Look at that, clean, clean as a whistle. That is a nice looking console output, not a single copy in this code anymore. Do you see how we've just optimized this really easily by just knowing how it works and being aware of the fact that our vertex object was actually getting copied like six times? It's not even hard to write code, but this code over here specifically is gonna run a lot, a lot faster than the code that we originally had, and it didn't even take long to optimize. It's just about knowing what's actually going on, knowing our environment, and knowing how we can actually optimize using the tools that we have available. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is like our first kind of introduction to optimization. I love talking about this stuff, so we are gonna be talking a lot more about this kind of stuff in the C++ series. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button. If you wanna see more videos and you wanna help support the series, then head on over to patreon.com forward slash the channel. You'll get some cool rewards for supporting the series, such as being able to see videos early, contribute to the planning of the videos, and a few more perks, which you can check out on that site. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.